So we looked at cross-flow wind turbines when it came to looking at the ridge blade wind turbine and it made me think of cross-flow water turbines. It was actually invented in 1891 by Paul Motier with the French patent number 215662 and registered in the United States. The main purpose was to utilise it for mine ventilation, but it was overlooked. However, there was a re-emergence of interest in the late 1920s and early 1930s with a variety of industrial inventions and different applications such as drying grain, air conditioning which came in round about there and the injection of pulverised fuel into furnaces. It was also used by Anthony Mitchell who designed the cross-flow hydro turbine in 1903 and Donat Bankey who founded his theoretical approach in 1922 and that made it known as the Bankey Mitchell turbine. At the same time Fritz Osberger developed Mitchell's design and painted it and therefore that kind of turbine is mostly known as a Bankey Mitchell turbine and an Osberger turbine and it's one of the main varieties of cross-flow used in hydro. Now you may think I just have a ton of this stuff lying around and I do have a ton of this stuff lying around. This is the second part of an air conditioning unit. It's the bottom blower section. You see it differs from the top part and the top part was quite fit, uh, quite small. This one's quite a large rotor and if you look at the Bandy Mitchell turbine you'll see that with the housing and the rotor we have almost a complete turbine right here. All I've got to do is remove the motor section and leave the shaft so I can put a DC motor on it. Now, it was invented by an Australian in 1903, at least in 1903 was when he got the patent. Then an Hungarian, Banky, he got his uh, patent in 1933 for some additions to it. And it is supposed to be um, brilliant for micro-generation. Now, when you think micro-generation, uh, I think a few kilowatts, but they... <laughs> In terms of their thinking, it's up to 2,000 kilowatts. So there is micro and micro, it would seem. Now, apparently, it is um, self-cleaning because of the way the water flow goes. It, it flows in, and instead of going around, it goes through and to the other side, and so can help with the cleaning process. And in operation, it uses uh, it, it, its maintenance cost is very much lower than other turbine types. So well suited to micro generation, well suited to um, low maintenance. Its peak load efficiency is less than the peak load efficiency of something like a Pelton wheel, but its average efficiency is surprisingly good because it's able to cope with variable load, or so they say. Anyway, we have the basics right here. And what I'm going to do is turn this into a Banky Mitchell Crossflow Turbine. And let's give it a go. Do a couple of these, it really doesn't take long to get this apart. All of 15 minutes. Anyway, there's the housing and here's the rotor which pulled straight off. Now what's important with these rotors is that blade shape. Apparently they're normally made as a section of a pipe. So you cut a thin section of a uh, circle of a pipe and then weld or glue or fix it in between two end plates and that's actually what makes your rotor so it's got that profile to the blade when i look at this blade i can see it's got a circular profile to it so if you've got a flat blade it's no good you need a slightly circular profile to the blade and that's what this rotor has so this rotor is just fine there's the end plates to the induction motor. There's obviously the rotor, which is a squirrel cage rotor. And there's the stator. So the stator and the rotor we won't be using. The bearings, the axle, and the end plates we will be using. So now let's fit the whole thing back together. So when I look at this, which is the end plate of the housing, it's got a, a rubber section there for the rotor to sit in. And of course, what that means is the end of the rotor is going to wobble. Now, it wasn't much of a problem to have the original motor because the original motor had a couple of sets of bearings set uh, wide apart. But here's the front face of the motor put back together because it just sits like that. We can screw that on, but that can still wobble. So it'd be great if we could put another bearing on here. And of course, I've kept the end cap. But if I were to put that end cap back on where it came, there'd be nothing jutting out there for me to be able to uh, attach my DC motor to. So I need a bit of axle jutting out. So you see these extra long bolts I've put in, they're M4s, and I've drilled a hole in the back of the casing, so I can just do that with it. And do that with it, and put the bearing back in, and suddenly I've got two bearings supporting it, and I'll be able to attach something to there, uh, like a flexible couple. Okay, instance. let's simulate our cross-flow turbine with a bucket of water.
<laughs> okay, that actually worked, kind of cool. There's no load on it, but it spun the thing, hey? So if we have a look at a cross-flow turbine, now you can see this bit here is probably too far over, so we probably need to modify that section there. If I let that fill with water, because it normally the air comes out here and the water was choking it, it actually acts like a brake on the turbine, so I had to drill a couple of holes in there to let it out. But that took me all of an hour, I think, to do that. And there's certainly plenty of this stuff kicking around, and I wouldn't be surprised if you get a decent amount of generation, because we just flowed a bucket over here. And if you read the description of crossflow uh, cross turbines, they do actually um, put a channel on there to create more of a jet and less of the uh, little flow that we got. But pretty easy to do and pretty interesting. So thank you very much, Neil, for that heads up. Fascinating style of turbine and certainly one to look at when thinking about micro turbines. So I've got a couple of options now. As I say, I don't think the Pelton wheel is particularly approachable to most folk. I don't think a water wheel will do a particularly good job. We've looked at Archimedes screws, we've looked at a Ponchelet wheel, and now we've looked at a cross-flow turbine. So there are options out there, depending on the water flow you've got, the head of water you've got, how dirty it is, how much you want to spend on it, and what kind of effort you want to put in keeping it running. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the videos. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.